All right. We left off last time talking about Thomas Hunt Morgan and how his white mutant flies, along with his other mutant flies, started to suggest that the chromosomal theory of inheritance was starting to look more and more true. Now, this time, we're going to see how a young junior in college sealed the deal and proved to everybody that the chromosomal theory was, in fact, true. All right, a little background on this guy, Alfred Sturdivant. His father was a university mathematician who became a horse farmer. And Sturdivant actually, as a child, made a, had kind of an obsession with making pedigrees of all these horses. He was really taken after his father, a mathematician. Around. So when he grows up, he went to the university mostly to study natural history and emphasis in Mend Mendelism, Mendelian genetics. He wanted to go back and use what he had learned to breed the best horses in the country. So he's working with Mor Thomas Hunt Morgan as an understudy. So basically he's helping him out in the lab, doing kind of some of the grunt work that it takes for all of us scientists as we work our way up the chain. So one night he decides um, he's pretty interested in all these mutants and this recombination stuff that Thomas Hunt Morgan's been looking at. So he takes all the data, and brings it home. He says he just wants to take a look at it one night. And he, start, he thinks he starts to see something. So what he does, he blows off all of his homework. He says homework is not nearly as important as what I've just come across. So it turns out to be the most famous all-nighter in, well, probably in the epidemic. So what does he do? Well, he looks at the recombination rates between these different mutants that we saw last time with the black bodies and vestigial wings. And he starts to chart them on a fictional chromosome. So we'll just call that our chromosome for now. What he does is he looks at black body, vestigial wings, is a 17% recombination rate. So he goes black body, and we'll say vestigial wings. You know, just maybe they're located on a line. So that makes sense. Then he looks at the recombination rate between the flies with the red cinnabar eyes and the little puny vestigial wings. And so 8%. All right, well, we'll draw one here. It's about eight away. Could be one of these two spots. And he looks at recombination rate of flies bred with the mutation cinnabar eyes and their black bodies. What does he see? It's 9%. So that means that it's going to be closer to the black body gene than it is further away. Suggest that one. It's not the right answer. <laughs> so, he looks at another mutation. This is the four lobed wings. Kind of a one. But, all right, so between lobed wing gene and the vestigial wing gene, we see a recombination rate of only 5%. It almost never switches over. 5% away, well, this was nine, this distance right here, so it would be Right about here. Could be there. Could also be over here. 5%. We look at this at 17. 17 there. CC. CV. That's 8. BC is 9. Well, you add these two together, you get 17, so it makes sense that they're all located there. What's most important about this is he forms a testable hypothesis. See here, they haven't done it yet, but a lobed wing, black body cross, should be, well, let's see, 17 plus 5, 23, or 17 minus 5, 12 percent. So the recombination rate is probably going to be one of these two. And if it's not, then all this is probably going to get thrown out. But he does this, does this cross. What does he find? Well, 23%. So we had 
this, and there it is. No. That's okay. What does this prove? <laughs> what happened? It proves that chromosomes are the transmitters of genetic information. And it also shows us how we can determine the location of a gene just by doing these recombination rates. Now this is relative position, because it could be on the same chromosome, but far enough to weigh that recombination rate is still 50-50. And that's what we're going to look at next.